It's the final campaign push for two first-time candidates, both Democrats, Max Rose and Mikey Sherrill, both military vets, who are looking to flip Republican seats in New York and New Jersey. Joining me now are the candidates. Thanks for coming in from the trail. Oh, thank it's you great for to see us. you, Max and Mikey. Mikey, you're over in New Jersey, mm -hmm. around the Montclair, New Jersey area. Yep. Um, talk to me about that district and why you think it, that there's a shot for a Democrat this year. Sure. So I'm in Montclair on the eastern edge of the district, and it stretches out into Sussex County. Um, this is a district that's really excited about the idea of change and new leadership in Washington. I think people in my district want to see bipartisan legislation that works for New Jersey. And what about the Trump factor? How, do, how are people reacting? If you could put on your, you know, non-candidate hat, how do people feel about immigration, the migrants, the caravan, and all the rhetoric that's been used? You know, I think people uh, across the district feel different ways about President Trump and what's coming out of Washington. What's uniting them behind my campaign is the fact that this tax plan is worse for New Jersey than any other state in the nation. Uh, we've got to have quality and affordable health care for people in New Jersey, and we need infrastructure spending. And so while uh, they, they really look at things coming from Washington in all different ways, they look at what need, New Jersey needs uh, very similarly. Max Rose, we're talking about Staten Island, a typically Republican area. But you're a weekend warrior. You're in the reserves. You were in Afghanistan, decorated. How do you feel about the president sending troops to the border for a deployment that Jay Johnson at least says is, is of questionable value? Sure. So first of all, I, I and I know Mikey and many other candidates, we're for strong borders. We're for national security. That's not what this is. This is a political stunt through and through. It's no surprise they did it five days prior to an election. And the reason why they did it, I firmly believe this, is so you'll ask me about it. Because the less that I have the opportunity to talk about infrastructure and opioids and gun violence, the way this Congress shipped a trillion dollars to people who do not need it, they know that's to their political advantage because it's incredible their failures and their inaction. This is a political stunt. I find it disrespectful. And uh, you know we need to focus on real sound national security policy. And the fact that the military has uh, no real mission there. I mean, it's a support mission. But it's not a legal mission that the you know, soldiers are going to be taking out guns and shooting at people if they do throw stones. Uh, everybody knows the military cannot conduct domestic law enforcement. You cannot. And think about it this way. 5,000 troops will be double the number of troops we have in Iraq and Syria. It's a, we, our military is so stretched at this point for close to a generation now. People I know have been deploying five, six, seven times to a myriad number of countries. And now we're going to do this just for political gain? It's wrong. Mikey, what about young people, the millennial vote? Do you see any signs in your area that college students and, and people in their young 20s are actually going to vote this time because they have disappointed before. <laughs> they have. And yet I'm hoping this time they won't because we see them out knocking on doors. We had Vice President Biden in the district and we had uh, over a thousand people come out at Montclair State University to see him. So the young people seem incredibly energized in this cycle and I'm hoping we see that energy at the polls. How much of a factor is Donald Trump? He seems to have put himself front and center. So uh, it's fair to say this is a referendum on him. You know, I think young people, like many people, are concerned about some of the actions of the president, but I think they're also really concerned about how they're going to pay for their education, what the future of the, the economy looks like, how they're going to get good jobs in New Jersey. Right now, 85 percent of the people leaving our state are between the ages of 18 and 25. So while young people are concerned about the president, they're really concerned about their future. And Max, you guys are really part of a wave of more military mm -hmm. veterans running and former intelligence officers in some case. We interviewed a candidate in Michigan. Uh, <laughs> at the same time, people who have never been in politics before, what do you think is happening? What's this dynamic? Well, so I think that the way many of us look at this is not that we're suddenly becoming politicians, but that we are continuing our careers of public service at a time when I think that is desperately needed on both sides of the aisle. Irrespective of whether you're a vet or a cop or a teacher or a nurse, I think what unites people in public service is that when you show up to work, you can't afford to fail. You can't afford just to bicker or to worry about your social media. We don't see that in Congress today at all. They certainly love to thank us for our service, and that's good. But we need to actually try to replicate 
vets and public servants, you know, overall sense of their dedication to results down in Washington, D.C., and I'm looking forward to that happening in 2019. Max and Mikey, thank you so much. I'm not going to just thank you for your service. I'm going to thank you for your continuing service. Thank you. Bringing these issues to the fore and having you on the ballot is a great way to do it.